Welcome to Chapter 2 of the training video for Matrix Games World in Flames. What you are looking at here is the first page of the second tutorial. Before getting into the details of this particular screen, I want to describe the layout for the picture and text tutorials. In the upper left is the number of the tutorial on which page you are on, plus its title. This title is Countries. There's a short description of the tutorial overall. Underneath that there is a screenshot, and to the right there is a text description that goes with the screenshot. When you go through the tutorials, you should read through the text descriptions which describe the screen. In the upper right there are navigational buttons which let you go to the next page or previous page of this tutorial, jump to the first or last page, and change tutorials, either to the previous or the next one. You can also go to Home, which is the opening screen. The particulars of this tutorial are to describe the countries. There are 252 countries in World in Flames, but only eight major powers, Germany being one of the major powers. Germany has a homeland which is not contiguous. There's a section of Germany called East Prussia, which is cut off from the rest of Germany by the Polish corridor, which belongs to Poland. The insert here is a magnification of Berlin, where you see that it has three factories, and the hex next to it has a resource point. Warsaw is the capital of Poland, and the difference between Warsaw and Berlin is that Berlin is the capital of a major power, so it has a red center. Warsaw is the capital of a minor country, so it has a gray center point. Minor countries are in gray, and major powers have capitals in red. Here is Italy. Italy is the second of the three Axis major powers. Italy is the common boot shape, and it has a contiguous section, Sicily, which is connected through the strait at Messina and Reggio to the rest of Italy proper. Sardinia is also controlled by Italy, as indicated by the IT following the word Sardinia. However, Sardinia is not connected directly to Italy, and so therefore it is considered an autonomous region, just controlled by Italy. There are other places that Italy controls, like Zara over here, and the little letters after helps clarify who controls which. So this is controlled by Yugoslavia, Zara is by Italy, and this hex here is controlled by Yugoslavia. The third major power for the Axis countries is Japan. Here is Japan's homeland, and its capital is Tokyo. Tokyo is shown in red because it is an objective city. All objective cities are shown in red. Control of objective cities at the end of the game determines who wins. Another objective city shown in this screenshot is Vladivostok, which belongs to the USSR. There are five major powers on the Allied side, France being one of them. The border for France is shown as this dark burgundy line, and where it borders Germany, it has the Maginot Line. Within France, there is a subregion called Vichy France. What happened in World War II is that when Germany conquered Paris, it declared Vichy France, which means that it occupied most of France, but let a smaller government called Vichy France exist. If in the game Germany decides to do the same thing, declare Vichy France, then this border will help you understand what hexes belong to Vichy France and which are occupied France. This is the USSR. It is far too large to show on one screenshot. The capital is Moscow. Up in the north is Leningrad. Those are both objective cities. The third objective city shown here is Kiev, down in the south. What's important about the German invasion of the USSR is the Pripyat Marshes. Pripyat Marshes were a major obstacle to the Germans when they attacked the USSR. They sent some of their forces north through Belarusia and some of them south through the Ukraine. China is a third major power that is controlled by the Allied side. A lot of China has been conquered by Japan at the start of the Global War scenario. The Global War scenario starts with Germany's invasion of Poland in September 1939. By 1939, Japan had conquered a lot of northeastern China. The hexes that are controlled by Japan are shown by the small Japanese flag in each hex. There are two Chinese flags shown, one for nationalist China 
and one for Communist China. China is unusual in that there are two armies, separate, that are fighting on behalf of China against Japan. One is controlled by the Nationalist Chinese and one is controlled by the Communist Chinese. The United Kingdom is one of the countries within the Commonwealth. Another is India. India again is a very large country that cannot be shown on one screenshot. In the north is Delhi, which is an objective hex, and in the east is Calcutta, which is another objective hex within India. The global map shows clearly what hexes are controlled by which major power. The USSR controls its homeland plus Mongolia. Japan controls its home islands plus Manchuria and a lot of occupied China. It has a number of islands within the Pacific also under Japanese control. China is the truncated portion of China with the small dots shown here being the communist Chinese controlled cities. The other Axis powers are the Germany and Italy. Germany controls Czechoslovakia and Austria. Italy controls Libya and part of the Horn of Africa. The United States controls Alaska and also the Philippines and uh, Hawaii which is not shown on this screenshot. France controls an enormous amount of Africa including Madagascar and Syria and French Indochina and a lot of islands in the Pacific. Some of them are here and some more of them are over here. The Commonwealth is composed of Great Britain, Canada, South Africa, India, Australia and New Zealand which is down here. The Commonwealth also controls islands in the Pacific, a lot of Africa, and even islands over in the Caribbean. The fifth major power is the United States. Here are the lowland countries. Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Luxembourg is not actually shown because of the scale. Denmark is another minor country. All of these have capitals shown with a gray center. When Germany attacked France, what they did is they came through the Netherlands and Belgium, declaring war first on Netherlands and then Belgium, and then attacking down into Paris. This enabled them to avoid the Maginot Line. Here are some more minor countries, Syria controlled by France, Jordan and Palestine controlled by the Commonwealth, and a territory, Cyprus, controlled by the Commonwealth. Besides major powers and minor countries, there are many territories in the game. Kuwait is a territory. It doesn't have a capital per se. Saudi Arabia does. So you can tell whether a country is a minor country or just merely a territory in game terms by whether it has a minor country capital. Bahrain is a territory consists of just one hex with a minor port. Trucial Oman is a territory composed of many hexes with this minor point at Abu Dhabi. Other territories are island sets, such as the Santa Cruz Islands, composed of these four island hexes, and New Hebrides, composed of this chain of islands. Both of these territories are controlled by the Commonwealth at the start of the war. The fourth type of country, quote unquote, that is used within the game are subcountries. In this case, the sub-countries that are shown here are four, Bessarabia, these eight hexes, Transylvania, these seven, and South Dobruja, these two. At the beginning of the war, all of these are part of Romania. However, the USSR claimed Bessarabia, and at the time, Romania went to Germany and said, please help. Germany said, no, that I agree with the USSR, Bessarabia belongs to them. So the USSR occupied these eight hexes and made them part of their country. At the same time, Hungary claimed Transylvania and Bulgaria claimed South Dobruja. Romania turned to Germany in both cases, and Germany in both cases permitted Hungary to take Transylvania and, and Bulgaria to take South Dobruja. The net result was that Romania was cut by about one-third of its territory. Again, these are sub-countries, regional areas within other countries. Here are some other very important objective hexes. Gibraltar is controlled by the Commonwealth at the beginning of the game, and whoever controls Gibraltar 
controls which surface ships go between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. In effect, this means that the Allied player denies the Axis player permission to sail ships between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean. The Suez Canal is another connecting area between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. To control the Suez Canal, you need to control all four of these hexes. In this case, you not only stop the surface ships, but you can also stop submarines. Singapore is an objective hex that is controlled by the Commonwealth at the beginning of the war. Honolulu is controlled by the United States. And Panama City, again, a connecting canal between the Atlantic and the Pacific, is controlled by the United States. Turning from countries to the map overall, we'll go to the third tutorial, which shows the terrain types. Jungle is a tightly packed green, forest is a more loosely packed green, and swamp is a mix of both blue and green. All of these involve a lot of green, however you should be able to tell the three terrain types apart rather easily. Clear looks more like an aerial view of agricultural land as shown up here. There's desert, there's mountain, there's desert mountain. Desert Mountain contains the properties of both desert and mountain. The Qatar Depression is separate from desert. It is totally impassable to all unit types. The hexes shown in this screenshot are the entire Qatar Depression hexes. There are lakes and lake hexides. Larger lakes have an entire hex devoted to them, or multiple hex as in the case of Lake Lagoda. Smaller lakes oftentimes run down the hex sides and they block movement from one hex to another when the entire hex side is covered by the lake. So moving from here to here is not permitted. However, moving to the west is permitted. Moving from here to here is not permitted. Not permitted. So what you're looking at is whether the entire hex side is covered by the lake or not. Those are impassable to land movement. There's ice, which is glaciers, and tundra, which is same as ice, except that it's shown with a dirt smudge, and all sea hexes, which are an enormous proportion of the map. At the end of the tutorial, there is a summary page, which goes through all of the terrain types, shows them clearly, identifies them, also gives you your movement cost and combat effects with some uh, attached notes. The notes are later in the tutorial at the very end. So you can see desert, desert, mountain, tundra, Qatar depression, and so on. Coastal hexes are those that are both blue and land, so they have part ocean and part land. Turning to the icons that are within the hex, there's a city, there's a major ports, there are minor ports, there's a major power capital already mentioned, there's a minor power capital, there are also iced in ports, an iced in minor port and an iced in major port. The iced-in ports are only iced-in during snow and blizzard weather within the hex. Hankow, in this case, is just a minor port, and regardless of the weather, it always functions as a minor port. Turku, on the other hand, and during snow and blizzard, is iced-in, and basically it is just not a port at all. Other icons that are within the hexes are oil resources and non-oil resources, shown as a pick and shovel. Non-oil resources can have more than one resource point. In this case, there's three down here in the lower left. There are factories, both red and blue. In this case, one red and one blue. Here's a blue factory by itself. Here are three red factories, shown by the smokestacks all being red. The rail lines run and connect hexes so that you can travel by railroad from Madgeburg down to Leipzig. Similar to the terrain types for hexes, there are also a summary page for the icon types, major powers, minor powers, cities, and so on. Now to discuss hex side terrain. One of the hex side terrains has already been talked about and that's a canal which runs along a hex side. Here is the keel canal which has four hexes to control it. Whoever controls the keel canal can move freely between the Baltic and the North Sea. There are also river hex sides. Those are drawn freehand artistically. However, it should be easy for you to see that 
to move from this hex into Hamburg, you are crossing a river. So therefore, this is a river hexide. Likewise, moving from Hamburg to Bremen, you are crossing a river. So it's a river hexide. Other hexides are the forts, as discussed before. The Maginot line is a strong fort with black crenellations. Lulea has a new fort built, which is slightly weaker than the strong forts. They have white crenellations. The lines that connect the forts inside determine who controls it. In this case, it's Sweden that controls Lulea Fort, and it's French. The pale blue is, represents France throughout this war. Another very important hexide is the all C hexide. There's an all C hex and there's an all C hexide. This determines movement for land troops. So this hexide here is all C, and a land unit in Dover would not be permitted to move due northeast to the hex east of London because it would be crossing an all C hexide. However, if a land unit were in London, it could move due east because of the small portion of land that connects it. It could move the, from there up to Harwich because of the small portion of land that connects these two hexes. If it's an all sea hexide, movement by land units is not permitted. The other thing that is crucial about all sea hexides is it determines whether you can invade the hex from the sea. So if you have units in the North Sea and you want to invade Dover, that's perfectly fine. If you want to invade Harwich, that's fine. It has an all sea hexide. This hex due east of London has an all sea hexide. But London itself cannot be invaded directly from the sea, and that's because there are no all sea hexides around London. A couple more examples of that is this all sea hexide due east of Stettin. You cannot move land units between Stettin and the hex east of it. However, because this all sea hexide does permit units in the Baltic to invade due east of Stettin. Bordeaux has an all sea hexide to its east, so units cannot move from Bordeaux to the east. However, this hex east of Bordeaux can be invaded coming in through this all sea hexide. Another type of hexide terrain are alpine hexides. Land units cannot cross alpine hexides, and supply is blocked through them as well. So a land unit in this hex could not move west, northwest, or northeast because of the alpine hexides. However, you could move from here to the west, northwest, west, that would all be fine. But then if you wanted to move in this direction, you would be blocked by the alpine hexide. And here's the summary page for hexide types. There's a river hexide, canal hexide, alpine hexides. Straits are shown by these red arrows, the all sea hexide, the lake hexide. Sea area boundaries are shown in a dark blue. Country boundaries are shown in a dark burgundy and rather thick. This thinner one here is a regional boundary. Weather boundaries are shown in white. We'll discuss that more later. Fort hexides strong and fort hexides weak. The weaker ones are ones that you build during the game. Connection through a hexide by railways, connection through a hexide by roads, and also by Burma Road. Roads are very rare in the game, and the Burma Road is only running from China down to Burma. Naval movement and operations in World and Flames is different from land movement and air movement. Land movement uses hexes. Naval movement uses sea areas. So you would move a unit from a port to the Baltic Sea and then to the North Sea. It would cost one movement point to move from a port to the Baltic Sea and a second movement point to move into the North Sea. Units based in Honolulu are right on the node of three sea areas, the Hawaiian Islands, the Marshalls, and the Christmas Island sea areas. Whoever controls Honolulu uh, on Oahu has a major port where they can stack a, an infinite number of ships, and they can move at the cost of one movement point into the Marshalls, or the Hawaiian Islands, or the Christmas Island. This is one of the reasons that Oahu, Pearl Harbor, and Honolulu are so important. When you place a unit in a sea area, you need to choose which of the section boxes you place the unit in. The Allied has five, numbered from zero to four, and the Axis have five, also numbered from zero to four. 
The choice of section area determines how active the units are within the C area. So if you place a unit in the 4 box, it is very active when patrolling, which means that it can more readily search for and find enemy units, and it is also less likely to be surprised. Convoys are always in the zero box. They're not allowed to go into any other box. So convoys are very vulnerable to being surprised. This concludes Chapter 2, Map Basics.